So if a good logo is clear, engaging, and versatile, and we've seen the different types of logos that are out there, pictorial, logo types, combined marks, then the three, what I feel are the three most helpful basic approaches, like if you're just trying everything for a solution, one is central symmetrical. It's like building on top of crosshairs. You're building out from the center. One is dynamic, that you want the eye to move across the image. So you're trying to avoid, actively avoid horizontals and verticals, really rely on diagonals and curves. And one is a play with positive and negative space. And this is tricky, but you'll see that even though they're just black cutouts or solid color cutouts, the empty space around the cutout, like the S here for USA, or the giraffe and rhinoceros here for the elephant, or the faces here in the heart, or just the open spaces of the panda, I consider that um, a play of positive and negative space, just because you need both so, you're, you're aware of both and the weight of both in the image. And then this one with the key with the city skyline in the negative space. So it's just really being aware of what simple shapes can do to define each other. So if our theme this semester is to redesign Nico the Nighthawk, you know, with our own kind of preferences, I want to force you to do a central symmetrical approach. So I did one here of kind of a bird with a kind of heart-shaped head under a crown with an N as kind of the, the plume on the head. And then notice that central symmetrical doesn't mean it needs to be absolute symmetry. So the NLC is imperfectly symmetrical, but it's balanced on the middle, right? So everything builds out from the middle and is balanced. My dynamic one is just a slightly more ornate version of the, the current Nico, but I wanted to put NLC in the helmet and to get this even more dynamic, I think I can tilt it down a little bit more. Just have a little bit more movement. Again, you want to avoid horizontals and verticals. Play really with diagonals and curves. And then my positive and negative space, I did kind of a cutout into a silhouette of a hawk's head of a knight with the plume and kind of sync that up with where the, the hawk's eye might be and then just filled it in with a little in there because it looked like it needed that space, right? So just trying things out. What you're going to do is post these three for your proving ground. So I'll show you where. And then that proving ground is going to be due by midnight tonight. So I don't want you to overthink these, these sketches or overdo them. Because that sketch is then going to be used like the best of your three or the one you're most interested in working up will be used to create your final logo and then a color version of your final logo. So for the proving ground, you just need to post your three sketch approaches. You can do more than three sketches, but make sure you have all three approaches represented, even if they kind of don't fit the bill, because I know positive negative space is tough. So for mine, I'll show you how I post them. I'm going to use my FaceTime app. You have it in your dock. We lose these computers this week. We're also going to lose cameras in our monitors this week, so we might as well take advantage. And I'll take my little sketches, and I'll hold down Command-Shift-4, shortcut for a targeted screen grab. They just need to be clear enough that your fellow students can express what their preferences are and then you of course get to choose which one you build up but it can be it's very helpful to have outside input okay now those screen grabbed the problem is when you do a screen grab from your your selfie camera they're reversed so then you go you just open them up in preview by double clicking you go to tools and you can say flip horizontal you can also use tools to clean them up. I just say auto levels and then sharpen all the way, especially because I'm in low light. And then I can also 
change the, the color balance a little bit by shifting towards blue and then maybe taking some of the saturation down. So just basic editing. You can brighten the midtones. So that looks good. Let's do it for my third approach. It can be helpful to see your logo solutions reversed too because you kind of see how your sketches hold up. And you want to pick an approach that you're happy with because especially if it's your first time building a vector in Illustrator, it's going to take some patience. Okay, so now that I have them, I post them. So just for your, your reference, that's the current Nico the Nighthawk branding. You'll notice there's an N in the helmet design. There's actually a full Nighthawk in the helmet design. You can push it any way you want. And the inspiration for this semester is that more and more colleges are trying to turn their mascot illustrations into logos for branding. So I have the example of Sarah Lawrence doing that right now. And in order to change a full mascot illustration in multiple colors into a logo, you need to really think of it as just cut out shapes. So I'm going to go ahead and post mine. And make sure you label your sketches. You label what approach you're using. You can label it in Canvas. Or you can label it just like I did with your drawings. My screen grabs are pretty small, so I don't even need to change their size. That's weird. There they are. All right, so once you guys start putting your sketches up, let's look at the rubric that's required for this proving ground. This is just for the sketching. There's only two, two criteria. The first is that you create and post at least three rough thumbnail solutions for your logo designs. They're called thumbnails because they're small, they're loose, they're spontaneous. They don't need to be super refined, but they should give us an idea of the direction you would go if you were to build it up to a finished logo. And they need to have the three main approaches central symmetrical dynamic and a play of positive and negative space right if you post three or more qualifying thumbnails you'll get full marks for that criteria the next one is you need to write a response to at least one participating group member giving them your opinion and your input on their thumbnails right which one of their sketches has the most potential for a finished logo and what suggestions critiques do you have about that approach so in order to get the full 1.5 for this proving ground, to earn your skill in exercising convergent and divergent thinking, you want to wait until a few more people have posted theirs, and then you want to click reply underneath and give your opinions. So if I'm replying to mine, though of course you want to look at other people's work, we want divergent point of views. I, I'm kind of most drawn to the play of positive and negative space because I think that could be the most effective quickly. But I also really like this dynamic one and want to give it a shot. And so I might say, I like your dynamic approach. It feels more ornate and an artistic than the current one. Um, be careful to keep it as simple as possible when 
creating it as a vector. So if I post that, then I am meeting both criteria, right? Except you're not going to respond to your own work. You're going to respond to other solutions that are put up. All right. So David, these look good. Just underneath, maybe in Canvas, say central symmetrical dynamic, play a positive and negative, just to make it really clear. All right. Great. 